Hello, uh, welcome to solo playthroughs. We are playing our second game of Scythe for the channel. Um, and I'm just going to go on hard mode and then I'll probably come back to Scythe in a month or so. And I do want to do the cooperative module as a solo player. I think it's a pretty cool alternative for either in solo play or even just playing this game. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in... One of the situations where my experience level in Scythe, although I am not, if I am far from one of the greats, um, I am just more of an experienced player than my uh, game group. So having a, a module that we can play and enjoy this game and enjoy the richness of this game without my friends feeling like they're just, you know, fading, facing certain fate of losing, uh, it's not a fun position for them to be in. Uh, nor myself to be in so it's it's nice to have another way to play this game and get it to the table where we all can work together to uh, to beat the evil that is Fenris uh, in the cooperative module but I'm gonna try a different setup this time uh, <laughs> as you uh, if you watched my first video realized I, I had somehow cut off the power bar uh, and I was uh, you know basically had to have a uh, inset with the keeping track of the power as we went um, and then there were just some other things that were laid out a little funky. Tried to put the uh, player stuff at the top of the board. Of course, ended up going there, uh, even though I didn't expect to. So uh, I think this setup should work. Obviously not doing the pre-printed recommended places for the decks, but they will do just fine uh, where they are. So let's uh, get to it. So I'm going to open up the Scythekick app. Again, very, very strong. Um, what's new on Scythekick? I don't know. Not really sure I care. All right, good. So let's reset the current game. And I am going to not use the factions from Rise uh, from the Rise of Fenris. I will be using the Invaders from Afar. I'm a big fan of that expansion. And we're going to draw the first player. The first player is going to be Tagawa. I will be more than happy to be Tagawa. They are universally panned. <laughs> by people who are better at this game than me. Um, I enjoy them. I find them cool. I like the uh, pieces and I like um, just, you know, some of what they bring to the table. So they are a funny little uh, faction for sure in some ways. And I am going to have to refer to the Tagawa rules for sure because there are some extra steps in figuring out Otoma movement once you start laying those traps out on the board. But here we are. So we're going to go with Tagawa for me. And then we're going to draw the next player. And that's going to be Roseate. So again, I'm going to be crammed up right next to the um, Otoma. So it's going to be Engineering Roseate. So let me, well, never mind. That's the Otoma. So it doesn't matter what they what their engineering skills may be they are not engineering anything so we're going to put Rosviet over here and that's going to be the Atoma player and I already have the Gawa's board so I can get rid of the rest of the player mats and now I need to remember what my special thing was I am patriotic patriotic to Gawa that is faction mat number three and it starts with two of the uh, secret objectives. My one says have at least seven power and complete a move action that f this turn that forces at least one enemy worker to retreat. And the other one says have a factory card, at least one mech, and no more than three workers. Uh, both of them seem okay. Um, the no more than three is fine. If it said uh, no like less than three, that would be a lot more difficult for the way I play this game. Um, I'm going to have a... Oh, let me get all my stuff. Cool. I'll bring this out on the board. We have my uh, panel chooser. My two workers that are going to start there. These are my traps. I'll put them on the board here. We have the monuments, the armory, mine and the mill we're gonna need my tech upgrade boxes squares whatever you want to call them I guess they're boxes 
Box this is right. I should have one more. Nope, I shouldn't. I lied. All right, we have my recruitment guys. Gonna go right there. Oh, I put the <laughs> right. I put the boxes on the, the cubes. That's the word I was looking for before. All right, the cubes need to go top, not on the bottom. And then we're going to have these six stars that will go on my player mat, or faction mat. And we are going to have the power is going to be at zero. All right, so I think we're set. Um, let me get combat cards. I get two. I got a three. <laughs> And a three, one of these days, I'm going to get a four and a five, and it's going to be glorious. And a Rosby gets there too, which I'll put there on its player mat. All right, so my first turn. Um, again, I'm kind of forced into this tech, tech upgrade garbage. Um, so production right off the bat doesn't seem to make too much sense. And since the tech upgrade is linked to movement, if I can get the two oil and I can do a top and bottom in action um, and kind of set myself up make enlistments a lot cheaper get those out and then kind of work toward my uh, my big money item which is going to be that uh, you know those uh, uh, mech uh, deployments so I'm going to do the trade action I'm going to spend one to get two oil and I think that will be what I need to get started in the most beneficial way right now so uh these were upside down let's put them with the one up cool and we're gonna take the top atoma card and it is a attack move if it has power six um there's nothing to attack anyway it's attack move against a worker and then it's a worker movement worker movement we're going to take the worker that is closest to the atoma's base by reading order so this one and we were gonna move it uh, in the area of the most other Otoma units. Uh, the units on the base do not count. So the almost of the Otoma units is gonna be here, which is one or one. Remember, it can't go uh, you know, in the hex with another worker, just trying to the neighborhood of the most units, including workers. Uh, this is close to the factory. There are no armed traps. So this secondary tiebreaker is irrelevant. And we will go here. And since it's a worker, not the character, that encounter token stays right there. The atoma is going to gain stuff. We're going to give it two. And then there's going to be an enlistment bonus of power if I had that open. And there is the star area is crossed out. So we do not advance along the Altomazina track, which is nice. I think there are three cards out of the 19 in the Atoma deck that have that crossed out star. So my second action is I'm going to do a move. Um, I'm going to move this guy to the village and get my worker on the board and i can put a trap out if i want i expect that i'll have a unit on that hex for the entirety of this game so i will not do that um because again i would only do it there if i thought it would be necessary for end game control uh, i'm going to spend these two oils uh, since i did a bottom line action i will get the bonus of that one money i will put that there and then i will upgrade my movement and we're going to make enlistment cheaper all right let's go to the otoma's turn we're going to go uh doing a um, factory or encounter uh move so we're going to move here that is the only valid hex it does not have river walk and that's not in the neighborhood of an otoma unit anyway and so this encounter token comes off the board the Atoma gets three power and a money. If I had the enlistment open for money, I would get a money as well. I do not. But again, we pulled the second of three cards that do not have um, the track advancing. So getting a little bit lucky there for sure. So let's do production. Definitely, definitely, definitely want to get my third worker on the board. I know with this one of these, if I get a factory card, have at least one mech and no more than three workers, I can get that objective without having to force an enemy back to retreat. Oh, this got slid up. That's on a two. Um, without having to force a unit to retreat, that would be rough. 
All right. Um, because force neurons to retreat would cause popularity, and popularity is going to be a little bit of a, since I'm not building structures, it's going to be a bit of a struggle getting up to um, the higher levels, especially because, again, that you're always looking for double actions, and the double action here, um, eh, oh, man, maybe I get that armory out. I don't know. It's going to be really tough for me to get a structure. So it's kind of like a double whammy with this board um, where I'm patriotic, but sure as hell ain't that political because I'm not making many friends here. All right. Um, let's go to the workers, the Atoma's first, um, third movement, I should say. Their third turn, the Atoma, we're not playing Nordic. We're going to do a uh, factory or an encounter. Um, there are no valid hexes for that move. So we just go to the third move where it is a character move. The character is going to be picked up and the character is going to go to the uh, the valid hex in the neighborhood of any Atoma uh, units uh, closest to um, uh, the combat unit of me. Um, and uh, then it's going to be, as far as the tiebreakers, it's going to be factory, closest to factory as the first tiebreaker. So that will go right there. The Atoma is going to gain a power and a worker, and I do not have the, recruit the recruitment bonus open for power, otherwise I would get a power as well. And now we have our first star. Whee! Alright, my turn. We are going to go to um, movement. Oh, man. think well debating whether I should go here again kind of just get that top line under my belt uh, make sure I can do that that upgrade uh, the next time I'm there because again getting all if I have any chance of getting all six tech upgrades I have to be super focused on that I don't love it but it might work and then even late it would if I get all six upgrades then the wood would only the the structures would only cost me two um, so I could go here and guarantee myself a structure every time so there's some utility to thinking this way um, but again it's like it's it's a lot um, it's a lot of turns to focus on this but let's uh, I think it's the best move right now so I'm gonna go there and do a trade I'm gonna get one oil and I'm gonna get one uh, I'll get two oil so that way when I produce again next time I will have an additional oil so I'll be able to get at least my third tech upgrade fairly easily. So the fourth turn for the Atoma we're not playing Saxony so we can ignore that. We're doing a uh, worker move. This worker is going to pick up and it's going to go to the only hex it can go that doesn't have another worker because again Riverwalk has not been unlocked yet the Atoma gets another worker it gets a money I would get the enlistment bonus of a heart if I had that opened. I do not. And then there's going to be a star. All right. My turn. We're going to move. I'm going to move these two guys back to the enlistments. I'm going to move this guy here. And I'm going to put the minus two power cards token there. That's the trap. Because uh, I don't know if I will be spending much time there. I'm going to get this encounter token. Um, so I'm going to take the top card from the encounter deck, which I'm not sure if I shall fold. So one, two, pretty sure I did, but you know. All right, so the top card from the encounter deck is repair a broken fence. I can gain two food and one popularity kind of love that. I can pay two dollars to gain any three resources or I can pay two popularity to gain one worker and three metal. Definitely don't want the one worker and three metal because I don't want to spend the two popularity. Um, any, two resource, any three resources is tempting but honestly food is... Mm, oh, but I'm going to be good with food because anytime I produce I'm going to automatically have the food I need. It's hard to give up that popularity. I'm going to be really desperate for popularity, but I think it makes the most sense to spend the two, get any three resources, and I'm going to get three metal. 
and then it has to go where my character is because he is the one she is the one who did the encounter all right now i'm going to do my bottom line actions i'm going to spend these two oil i'm going to make my bolster action better and i'm going to make my deploy a mech action cheaper and i get one dollar for doing that bottom line action cool um, let's do the Atoma's turn. It is a worker move. Worker is going to be picked up. There are no valid hexes because Riverwalk has not been unlocked. Again, we got really lucky with that that um, no star, no star right off the bat of the game. So I'm going to pick him up and he can't move. So there's no valid movement. So we can ignore the top line of that card. There's going to be a, he's going to gain, the Atoma's and she is going to gain a coin. There is no unlisten bonus opened up. Not that I have any recruits yet anyway. And then there's going to be a star. So now Riverwalk is opened up for all subsequent turns. Production, I'm going to, my turn, I'm going to go to the produce panel. I'm going to gain one oil for that one worker there. I'm going to gain two food for the two workers that are on the field. And then I'm going to immediately spend those two food to get two money as my bottom line bonus. And then I'm going to recruit, and I am so, oh, so desperate for power too. <laughs> Every popularity is going to help. So I'm actually going to open up this first, and then I'm going to put it there. Nope. Every power is going to help too. I'm going to open up that, and I'm going to take those two power, because I'm going to need the ability to defend myself with a quickness here. All right, we're going to go to the Atoma's turn, the Atoma is doing a worker move. Now that Riverwalk is unlocked, the Atoma is going to look at, um, it, it's gonna, it's, it's hexed, so it's gonna go to the neighborhood of the most other units. So if it goes here, it'd be in the neighborhood of three other units. If it goes here, it's gonna be in the neighborhood of three other Atoma units. So the tiebreaker, first tiebreaker is gonna be closest to the factory, so that clearly puts that worker there. The Atoma gets two power, and this star moves on the track. All right, no enlistment bonus mentioned there. My turn, I'm gonna do a movement action. I'm going to move my character, it's gonna move there. I'm going to put another trap here. We're gonna put the th minus three power. All right, um, and I have two more moves if I want them, and I think I do. <sighs> yeah, I think it makes sense to go there to just get that, that extra metal every turn. All right, I'm gonna do my third upgrade action now. So when he moved, he took those um, oils with him. We're spending those two oils. I'm doing the bottom line action. So I'm getting this bonus. I'm going to get this uh, power upgrade because I have that enlistment bonus opened and I'm going to make it even cheaper for me to create a hex. I'm actually going to open up that double popularity in case I don't do any more tech upgrades and then that will go there. All right, worker. I mean, Atoma. Atoma is going to do a mech movement, but the Atoma hasn't gained a single mech yet, which is actually hard to believe. Uh, yeah, we're getting really lucky with this Atoma deck. Um, but he does get four power, one, two, three, four, so it's a strong likelihood he's going to get that bonus, which is unfortunate, because that's, again, the only way he can get stars um, other than winning combat, or she can get stars other than winning combat and um, getting further on this track. So... Make sure I'm doing this right. Yep, so there's seven cards here, but two of them are blank. So one, two, three, four, five. We're good. So those two blanks really help because otherwise we'd be here and only two away from advancing. So these two extra turns are nice. Um, and we're good to go. So let's make sure we're doing the power right. There should be 10 power total here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. That is that. My turn. It is time, folks. It is time to deploy a mech. Yes, it is. Um, what are we doing? We're going to... Nope. It's time to enlist another recruit. 
that's what it is. So I'm going to do the produce action. I'm going to get this metal here and we're going to get those two food. I'm going to immediately spend those two food for a recruit. We're going to put these two coins here and um, I'm going to open up the enlistment bonus for the structures just in case. And I'm going to put this here to get two new combat cards. I got a two and a three because I pull garbage. That's what I do, folks. I have a two, three, three, three. So strong. <laughs> mm. All right. Uh, in, in, or Otoma phase. Um, it's going to be a worker. I'm sorry, character, uh, factory, or encounter token uh, move. This is, so there's two encounter tokens that are in the neighborhood of Otoma units. This one is closest to the factory, so the character's gonna go there, get him out of my way a little bit more, which is nice, and he gets that. Additionally, he is gonna get a worker, and he is going to get a, fact, or a, a power card, and I do not have the bonus open, uh, unless the bonus of power cards open for me, so I do not get a power card, and the star, the, the cube moves along the star track for the Ultima Xena. My turn. Let's start moving up this power track. I'm going to spend a dollar to bolster three. Again, it's two, plus I have that cube moved. And now I'm going to spend two of my metals to deploy a metal to, 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 to sorry, deploy my first mech and I'm going to give myself the, move, the ability to move to and from lakes in combat on a lake I can play an additional power card I have to put this where there is a worker so I'll put him there I get three money as my deploy a mech bonus and that is my turn so I have a much more I have a much straighter path now to the factory from here we're going to pull an Atoma card Tom is going to do a mech move, but magically is still not gained a mech, um, which is bananas. Uh, there's going to be a worker move. The worker's going to move to the neighborhood with to the the place with the neighborhood of the most Otoma units. That is only one that has three different uh, units there. So the worker's going to move there. The worker finally gets a mech, and then the Otoma gets two power. There is no enlistment bonus there, and then we move up one more. Um, I still feel like we're behind on this track, but I guess we're not. Six, seven, nope, we're good. Ah, not happy they're going to get that bonus, but there's really nothing I can do about it at this point. So, my turn. We're going to do... Uh, do I want to? Tempted to go back here. No, you know what I want to do? I'm going to go to produce. I'm going to get a metal. And two food, keep the two food. I'm gonna do an enlistment. So I get two money for enlisting. And I'm going to enlist uh, the combat card one now. And I'm gonna place this on the two popularity. All right, Atoma turn. Atoma is going to do a factory encounter card, a counter token move. So he goes there, it's the only valid hex that has an encounter token still and the Atoma is going to get a worker and a money there is no enlistment bonus listed and this goes one away from getting us to the first star from the track and moving us into the second phase so to speak of a solo game of Scythe alright my turn I want to That's fine. I'm going to do. Hmm, keep the hedging whether or not I want to just try to get those last two oils or not. But I think I have a better idea. So I'm going to spend the one, really just kind of maximize all these the top and bottom line action turns that I can. So I'm going to spend these two metal to do the bottom line action. I get three as an enlistment bonus, or I'm sorry, as a bottom line action bonus, and I'm going to put I am gonna 
put Ronin in play, and I'm going to put Ronin down here with the two workers on that field hex. All right, we are going to go here. So we're doing a mech move. So mech move. Mechs are going to go to the closest non-attacking mech move. So they're going to go to the uh, in the neighborhood of any Atoma unit, and they're going to go to the closest, uh, the shortest distance from an enemy combat unit, um, closest to factory. Uh, and then the second uh, tiebreaker would be armed trap, but there are no armed trap tokens in a place that I don't already have a combat unit. So maybe one, two, the tiebreaker puts this, because these are both, all three of these are one away from a combat unit, obviously, but this is not in the neighborhood of an Atoma unit, so it's going to have to go there. Since it is Rosviet, Rosviet's going to get a worker, then it's going to get another worker, and then it's going to get a money. There's no enlistment bonus again, so really not getting much help out of the enlistment bonuses on these cards. And we move to stage two, and that is the first star for the Atoma. Good thing if they do an attack move, uh, it will trigger those traps as the first thing that happens before combat. Um, and if I can prevent somehow the Atoma from getting this this six 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 that the sixteenth power, that actually be a really nice advantage for me. What am I going to do? All right, we are going to do. Our final enlistment, because I think that makes the most sense. So we're going to do a produce action. We're going to get another metal. We're going to get, see, I've just been kind of cycling back and forth with these two for a while now. Keep the two food. I'm going to get my last enlistment, so I get two money for this last enlistment. I get a power car, because I finally have that enlistment bonus opened. It's a two. Who's shocked? <laughs> Dude, the Atomas cards are going to be bananas. I'm going to open this up, goes there, and I get two money. And I get a star for having all four. That two money is for the, the one-time enlistment bonus. And then the star goes there for having all four of my enlistments done. Yowza. All right. So a lot of the, the, fa the second phase of a game against the Atoma, there is tends to be a, more combat. And sure enough. So uh, we're doing a character or mech attacking move um, so we're gonna find the character or the mech that is closest to the Atoma's base it is clearly the character and again the Atoma has not been getting a lot of mechs so that's fine now it's going to come to um, uh, in the neighborhoods both of these are in the neighborhood of the Atoma so there will be two wood resources at stake on this combat um, so, because basically this gets flipped over onto the main discard pile as opposed to the combat discard pile. So, yes, this flipped over. We're going to do a combat. And um, now we know there's two wood at stake because this is going to be on the main discard pile. So we can pretend like it is there. Um, it is, uh, I have one unit there. So since I have exactly one unit, I gain two. That's my Ronin ability. That happens before combat, and now I have to decide what I'm committing here. They have 15 power and one unit, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. You know, how many cards they commit will depend on a lot of things, but the trap is triggered, so they actually lose three power. One, two, three. So they only have 12 power. So a lot of good things actually happen before the combat. <laughs> Let's see if we can keep it up during the combat. So I'm spending the three. Um, and I'm going to commit the three, and I think I'm going to spend seven and give myself the max defense of ten that I can get. So seven, this, so I'm going to lose this power. I go down to four. We're going to pull a combat card for this guy. Uh, shoot, that's gross. So the fact that he lost the three is gross because he would have spent seven otherwise, 
but he lost the three, so he only spends one now, and there's no combat card, so I totally would have won had I not had him lose that three power. Um, gross. So he goes back, well, he goes off the board, actually, and that's why he can be gained back later. This goes into the combat discard pile, which is a separate discard pile, which I'll just put there. Um, so he lost his one power. I lose this card, and I lose already lost my seven. He's gonna get a combat card as a consolation prize, um, and then we're gonna carry out the rest of this Atoma card. So he gets one money, and I get the enlistment bonus of a combat card myself. It's a two, who's shocked? And this goes on the side, and this star actually doesn't move because we keep picking as the first card, that card. Wow, shoot. <laughs> um, lots to like about what just happened and a lot to not like too. So what I'm gonna do is go back here, I'm gonna spend a dollar, I'm gonna bolster back up to seven, which is the max you can spend on the, the combat track, obviously. And then I'm gonna spend these two metal, I'm going to recruit another um, mech, deploy another mech, I get four money because I get the, comp, uh, the bottom line bonus plus the one recruitment bonus. And I'm gonna put Toka, no, Shinobi on there. Uh, and I have my reasons for that. All right, well, shoot. We are gonna now do the Atoma's turn. It's not playing Saxony. We are gonna do an encounter, a character or an encounter Oh, sorry, a factory or an encounter move, but the uh, the Atoma character is not on the board, so that's not valid. So then we do a uh, non-attacking character move, but again, the character is not on the board, so we just don't have to worry about that. The Atoma is going to get a, another combat card because that's clearly what it needs. We're going to give it two more money. And I have the enlistment bonus of money open, so I get a dollar myself. And we have our first star in stage two. Gee. I'm going to do some things. I'm going to move. I'm going to move these two guys here. Oh, and I remember we knew from that combat card that I also have two wood. which is a thing. And that's gonna go where the combat happened. All right, so I'm gonna do a three move. I'm gonna move this mech here with these two workers. I'm gonna move my character into the center and I'm gonna place a trap there. I'll put the minus two popularity and I think that makes some sense. I'm gonna put the minus four money in the now. I'll put the minus four money just in case there's an attack. Minus four money, and then I'm gonna move this guy here. He can rearm this trap, and I'll just leave him here with the wood, which is fine. All right, uh, we do not have a bottom line action, but a little, a little spread out, which is okay, not great, but and I'm still on the bottom tier of popularity, which I really don't like but not much I can do about it. Shoot. Nah. So, combat move with a, either the character or the mech. There is only one mech on the board, which is really, really crazy still. So this mech's gonna come here and attack. He triggers this and loses four doll hairs. It's the only reason I put the minus four there is I thought this could happen. And again, combat can happen on a lake, which is fine. So, um, Otoma lost that four dollars. Now, uh, I have exactly one unit, so I gain two power. And uh, on a lake, I can play a second combat card. So when I when there's combat on a lake, I can play a second combat card. So this is kind of crazy. So there are going to be four resources at stake, but of course, there's no resources in a lake. I, I, they're going to have fish in the next scythe expansion, I guess. Um, I'm, that, that would be awesome. Uh, I'm going to play these two cards. Let me get this power dial. The key only has 11. Um, they can always win seven. 
try to figure out how really don't want to lose this one but if I lose it I can kind of go back there so it's not the worst thing ever so I'm going to spend f if I spend four that will give me down to this five I'll spend four and go a little conservative because then I could um, Again, if there's one unit, I'm going to get plus two. Anyway, I could get back to the max. So I think that math makes a little bit of sense. And my comp it just sucks that my combat cards are so bad right now. Because um, if they play one combat card, you know, I think statistically now they're much more likely, the Atomic is much more likely to have a better combat card than me. Um, let me do this. So all I have are twos left over here. So I'm actually gonna spend four, so I'm attack I'm defending with a ten. So because again tie goes to the attacker. So we're gonna pull a combat card. Jesus. They're spending six and doing two combat cards. Oh, and I got a star earlier for that combat. They're spending six, they get the two combat cards. Um so they crushed me. I get like a solitary card. It's a freaking two. I don't even understand how that's possible. So I lose four. They lose six. So we're five, five. Um, that's really gross. And uh, now um, this is for the combat deck. I go wee 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 back to my home. But the good thing is there's a trap there, so I can get back there fairly easily. These two cards get discarded, and this wheel goes over there. But definitely a bit unlucky in that. So we're going to gain, the, the Atoma gains the character. All right, that's why that character symbol is always next to the mech, and it's going to gain $1. There is no enlistment bonus, and then there is a star, so that is the second star. Um, and they gain a star for winning the combat. The good thing is that it looks like we're going to avoid the Atoma getting that extra, that easier star, just getting the power up. But would have much rather it have won that combat. Faux show. All right. My turn. It's a very, very, very fine turn. I'm going to I can build a structure which seems kind of crazy but I could really start spreading things out that way um, I can spread out anyway all right, I'm going to go here. I'm going to spend a dollar, get two wood, spend my four wood. I don't get a bottom line bonus, but I do get the recruitment bonus of that popularity, which is nice. And I will put this mine in this oil field. Uh, I really need those two more metal to get that last mech out, don't I? Yikes. Um, yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I kind of want to do that. Makes sense. I will hopefully find another way to get some metal. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So, uh, no bottom line. Oh, I did the bottom line. I got the, the popularity already. All right, we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to do a mech move closest to Otama. It's going to be um, right. So he got here because it was it was in his own neighborhood, which that was that was sort of legit. So now he's going to move to the neighborhood of another Otoma unit, including himself. Um, so he will go. He will get picked up, and he will get put back down right where he is because that is closest to factory and reading order, and there's no harm arm hex that he could go to so that is the legitimate neck move 
we're going to give him this and this, and he gets another mech. And again, that was a mech move, not a character move. So that is why that character stayed right there. And there is now the third uh, movement in stage two on the track, which gets another star there. No recruitment bonus. I'm going to try to get revenge. Moving in. So again, because of Shinobi, I can move to a ter any territory with a trap token and I can arm the trap, but I have to win the battle before I can rearm that trap. So that's my first move. My second move is I will move a uh, worker there and I'm going to move these two suckers over I'm not going to move a worker there. I'm going to move these guys there. And then with my third move, I'm going to move a worker there. I just try to spread out this board a little bit. All right. Um, or. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. I like it. So we now have to satisfy this combat because we are stuck in this lake. Before combat, where there's exactly one unit, I get up to seven and I can play two cards when I'm in a lake. I will play, how about I play two twos? How about I do that? Because I think that is the best, the best idea I've ever had. Oh, this is so bananas. All right, they only have five power. So we just don't know how many combat cards they're gonna be allowed to use, right? Because um, they have a bunch. Um, so I'm going to attack with a nine and I will hope that that is enough because they don't have much power at all. So I'm spending five. I've already taken it off my wheel and there's my two combat cards and it'd be really gross if this doesn't work out. So with the combat, we are going to, we're fighting over one fish resource, um, and we're pulling this, they spend zero power because they have zero to seven power, but there is two combat cards. So I still, in theory, could lose this if they pull over two tens, because I have attacks with a nine. There's a two, and there is a five, so they had seven. They lose, I'm gonna give them a consolatory, and I only wasted two power in that, so that was actually really, uh, that worked out well. So this is the third power card. These go away. He goes wee 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 back to his player mat. Notice when you lose a combat, you go back to your player, you go back to your home, when they lose a combat, they go back to their player mat and they have to be regained by future Otoma cards. I'm gonna reset this trap and I get a combat star. So my second and final combat star that I can get. So I have three stars on the board. Really need to figure out a way to get my last three, um, but we'll see how this plays out. So that is my turn, no bottom line action. All right, Atoma. Atoma is going to go here. We're doing a non-attacking mech move. They're going to go here, which is closest to factory, and that's going to prevent me from getting my factory card for my objective, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, wow. Uh, Atoma gets two power and gets its mech back and I'm going to get one power and there's a star so that should be the fourth star wow this got complicated um, I think I really need to get my last mech out so I gotta stop messing around with that uh, I'm gonna spend a dollar get to nope I lied. I'm going to do the produce action and I'm going to get two metal because I can get a metal on each and I can at least save the dollar that way. So I get one metal there, one metal there. And then I'll do movement next turn and yowza. Alright, Atoma's turn. It is a character moves to the factory or a hex he can't move to the factory because there is already a enemy unit there's already a total mech so he can't move there 
there are no hexes with encounter tokens either in the neighborhood so um, of any of Otomo units. So actually that, surprisingly, that move is actually canceled. But he is going to do a non-attacking combat move, a non-attacking move uh, with the character. Um, and it's going to be here because it's closest to the factory. There are no armed traps that would change anything. And then he's going to move. Um, a reading order says he, she will go there. Oh, no. Um, a line. He's going to go here because I have a combat unit right up there. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Toma gets three power, which is rough, and they get a worker, but all their workers are already on the board. I get a combat card. It's going to be a two. Oh, it's a three. <laughs> and they get a move on their track, which gives them another star. Rough, and I can't even get any more victories from combat, which is really gross. Oh man, I seriously I pulled nothing but threes and twos, and I've had a fair amount of combat cards here. Um, I'm gonna do a movement action in case there's a non attacking mech move. I'm gonna move here. And then I'm actually going to drop this token here. Because this guy is actually one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Oh, this guy's closest to the base. But then he would go there, lose four money. All right. So, how do I want to? I can move to and from Wakes. No, I lied. I'm going back here. I'm going to get another. I'm going to get my last mech on the board while I can. So, I'm spending a dollar. I'm bolstering three, spending these two metal. I get four money for putting another mech on the board, and then I'm gonna unleash this guy onto the board, and I'm gonna put him here, which is gonna force, because tiebreakers, they always go to the least number of uh, enemy units, it would force them to attack me there, and then at least they would lose the four money, even if they won the battle. Dirty. All right, it's home a turn. It is Saxony would attack, but this guy does not. It's going to be a non-attacking mech move. The mech is going to come here is one away from an enemy unit, and that is fine. So it's the closest combat unit. They, they don't worry about numbers of units when they're doing non-attacking mech moves. Um, but they do worry about numbers when it's actually an attacking move. So it's Rusviet, so he's going to gain that mech, and then he gains another mech, and then he gains a combat card. I gain a dollar. It's almost fair. And then they get moved up on the Star Trek. Now the next three turns, they're going to get a star each time, every time they move up. And there, remember, there are two cards in there still that would give them no movement up that track but ultimately we have to know that this game is uh quickly winding to a close what i want to do is really practice some strong area control right now um understanding that the armed hexes are going to be good uh and it's just unfortunate that i'm not going to be able to uh really get oh man it's not the greatest spot for me right now, that is for sure. But, um, four. At some point I'm going to need to go on this panel just to get up to that second tier. I'm worried about a worker getting there at some point too. I can do an eight. An eight to a what though? Uh, I wonder if it's worth also prevent them from getting up to a 16. They're probably going to get the new combat star anyway. All right, um, 
Let's kill a character. There's no point. Alright, there are two resources at stake if we attack something with resources. Mm. I'm just gonna do some spreading out, I think. So we're gonna do um, move, move, and drop this. And move. Because again, the more I can spread out and really play this area control game, especially when I get up to that second tier, it'll be really helpful. So Atoma's turn. Atoma's doing an attack. If they have a power of eight, they do. Uh, it's going to be character or mech, whatever's closest to home. Obviously, one of these guys is close to home. It's going to be an attack um, closest to enemy. So it's going to be um, in the neighborhood of any Atoma unit, contains enemy unit, and then it's going to be valid hex, fewest combat units, um, closest to factory, and if there's an unarmed trap token, they have to, if there's an armed trap token, they have to go there. So they're going to, he's going to go here on every level. It's a minus two popularity, which doesn't do anything. The question is whether I want to just sacrifice this one. Uh, the problem is this could end the game. If they win this and this advances, he's going to get a combat star and a star for that, which is kind of gross. And I am not in... Oh, there's no star there. Okay. That makes this a little bit more stomachable. All right, I'm the only unit there, so I get two. I'm going to spend... Um... Two. There's only a ten. I'm gonna spend two and four. I'm gonna spend six. No, three. I have a three over here. I'm gonna spend seven and hope for the best. So pulling this, and there's gonna be two oils there. Don't actually hate that. Nope. This is their turn. So this. Well, still two oils. Two, two oils. Uh, two, two oils, either way. Yikes. Uh, so the combat thing, they have 8 to 13. So they're spending 7 and a combat card. And that means they win. I get this. <laughs> it's a 2. They get another combat star. I go wee, wee, wee. All the way home. Rough. Uh, my combat cards have been so garbage. Um, so I don't get those two oils, which would have been nice. Uh, they get three power. Nope, I lied. That's for the combat. They get just a dollar. And I get a popularity. So really, the most important thing for me right now is to... Uh, I can't, I just did the movement action. Problem is they're going to win next turn. The game's going to be over next turn. Uh, I really, fortunately, was never able to get either of my objectives, which is kind of gross. So let me make sure I get into the higher tier. So I'm going to spend a dollar, get two popularity, and that's my turn. And then the game, ooh, game will not be over this turn. We pulled the other one that doesn't advance, so that was lucky. They're going to do a worker move. Worker's going to go in the range of the most um, Atoma units. Closest to factory, so that it's clearly going to be there. Gross. Uh, they get two money, and I get the innocent bonus of a power. And it's interesting. There's no. Oh, I build all four of my mechs, so I actually have a fourth star. So this isn't terrible. The scoring is going to be interesting. Um, 
let me do I can't get any more stars for combat so who really cares let me do a move and just spread out so I'm going to go one two and three so I am initiating a combat for kicks. I go up to two. I'm going to commit a two. I'm going to spend nine because I can. And so I, I basically get a seven with a two on my dial. And now we have to reveal the enemy's combat. They have three power, so they are spending seven. They're down to zero with a combat card. It's a two. <laughs> so many twos in this deck. There's no reward. This guy goes back. I can rearm this trap. Basically, took. I just transfer control that way. I guess. I mean, that's really no point. But it was fun. So we'll keep that. They get a consolatory thing, and we're good. And now it is the uh, enemy's turn. They don't have combat seven. They can't do combat against the worker because there's no of my none of my workers in their territory. They will get a new mech. Nope, they will do a non-attacking mech move. Uh, and the non-attacking mech move is going to go... Shoot. So it's going to go um, closest to enemy combat in the neighborhood of... So closest to factory. So it can't go on the factory and it's going to trigger an arm trap. That's the second thing. So this is going to trigger. They lose four more money. So they've lost eight money because of that trap. So that's a that's a big difference in this game. They get three. I get a heart. And there's a star. That's their sixth star. And that is the game. Now, score it up. A lot going on there. A lot more combat than normal. Um, you see both the fun and the difficulty of Tagawa all in one. Scoring. So, um, the Otoma, no, Tagawa, let's go with me first. I have nine popularity. I have four stars. I control one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hexes. Ten. All right. Um, we are going to get, I have zero resources, and I have... A bunch of money because again I was getting three or four every time I did a mech. So it's 12, 15, 20, exactly 15, exactly 25. And I have one structure next to a lake. Um, that's a score of 73. Rusby has 10. Oops. Yep, I'm good. 10, 6, they control. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have a trap there, but it's not armed, so they get this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They have no resources. They only have five, ten, thirteen money, and they have no structures next to a lake. So we edge them out. Seventy-three to seventy. Wow. That. Crazy. So if I didn't take over that guy and send him home, I would have had another X, he would have had another X, so then I think it would have been like 77 to 74. So that probably was a dumb risk, because if I had lost that battle, there was there was nothing I'd be able to do. It would have been hard to lose that battle though. Um But that structure just gave me the two points. Yeah, that was cool. I mean, really, those traps uh, having that minus four was uh, was pretty huge. Um, them triggering that was pretty huge. Got really lucky with the the no movement stars coming out a few times. Um, getting these guys up there, I think, was was pretty strong. Right, because I got up there. Then my last mech, I just deployed there. I'm trying to think how I got two guys up there. Um, but uh, yeah, like the those extra those extra traps, man. I mean, I have three hexes that I don't even have a worker on. 
Um, I, I wanted to keep at three workers. I really thought I was going to get to that factory to get this objective. Um, but clearly that never happened. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a cool, that's a cool close game. Um, probably closer than it, than it should have been uh, had I rethought my strategy a little bit. Um, but the lack of speed really, really affects uh, Tagawa and, and Albion. Albion's got a better setup. I mean, Albion's metal uh, and uh, and metal and food setup is is really nice. And then just the way Albion can move, you know, between encounter tokens is really nice. Um, you know, once you unlock that one mech ability. So, um, but uh, yeah, I'm. I'm I'm happy with that win. Didn't really know where I was going to go. A lot more combat than normal. What do we have? Four combat cards here. Five combat cards here. Yeah, that's that's bananas. Um, not usually that much combat in a, in a solo game of sight the way I play. But um, hope everyone enjoyed that. Any combats, questions, epiphanies, strategic decisions you're wondering about, things you would have done differently, happy to hear it. Um, always looking to get better at these games. And uh, that's about it. So um thanks for joining me as always uh we will be back next sunday at nine o'clock with a new adventure till then be well thanks again and happy gaming take care